Welcome to the deep dive. Today we're uh, jumping into NixOS. It's a Linux distribution, promising something pretty bold. Rock solid, developable friendly Linux. Yeah, and its whole deal is reproducibility, declarative configurations, you say what you want, not how, and these atomic updates. Right, atomic meaning updates either work perfectly or they don't happen at all. No half broken states. If you've ever like pulled your hair out because something worked fine here but broke over there, well, this one's for you. Absolutely. Our mission today is really to unpack what gives NixOS its power, figure out who it's actually for, and you know, help you decide if it's worth a look, especially if you're just done with that whole works in my machine nightmare. Okay, let's unpack this then. So fundamentally, NixOS is aimed at developers, yeah, power users, DevOps folks, people who need consistency. It's trying to kill those inconsistent environments and uh, hidden dependencies that cause so much grief, right? Exactly. The core idea is you write your entire system, set up packages, services, even kernel stuff into one single file, declaratively. One file for everything. Wow. Oh. And then you just apply it. Yep. Apply it all at once. That guarantees it's reproducible every single time. Okay. But how does it actually deliver that reliability, the day-to-day -day stuff? Well, this is pretty clever. Every change you make creates a new generation of your system. A generation? Like a version? Sort of, yeah. It means updates are atomic. If something goes wrong with a new generation, you can literally just reboot. Reboot. And then what? And choose the previous working generation right from the boot menu, instantly. It's like a built-in time machine. Makes trying things out way less scary. That safety net sounds amazing. But, okay, what about dependencies? That's usually where the works on my machine pain really comes from. Ah, oh, right. This is, I think, where NixOS is genuinely revolutionary. It builds packages in isolation. Isolation, how? Each one gets its own unique path based on a cryptographic hash of all its inputs. So different versions of the same library don't clash. They just live side by side. So you completely sidestep. Dependency hell. You eliminate it, honestly. You can have project A needing version one of a library and project B needing version two on the same system. No conflicts. It just works. Okay. That is a game changer. And this isn't some obscure project, right? It's actively developed. It's definitely not obscure anymore. Yeah. The latest release, 25.05, is huge. We're talking over 7,800 new packages. Updates to more than 28,000 existing ones. Wow. Yeah, it shows a really active community. You get up-to-date stuff like GNOME 48, Linux kernel 6.12, LLVM 19, TCC 14, <laughs> all current, all supported for seven months. So the strengths are clear, rock solid, rollbacks, huge package set. Sounds fantastic for developers. It is. You get that reliability, the control, the reproducibility. And you can use that same declarative approach for like everything. Local dev, CACD, Docker images, cloud setups, one tool. But there has to be a catch, right? It sounds almost too easy. Well, yeah, there's the learning curve. It's <laughs> significant. It's not steep in a lots of commands way, but in a different way of thinking way. Oh, so. You need to get comfortable with Nix expressions the language used in that config file. It really clicks if you have or can develop a sort of functional mindset, thinking of configuration as a pure function. Same input, same output, always. Okay, so it's not like installing Ubuntu or Fedora where you just click through. No, definitely not plug and play. You'll be editing that configuration, not Nix file, rebuilding the system, understanding concepts like um, flakes. Flakes? What are those? They're kind of the newer, better way to package up Nix configurations to make them super portable and self-contained. Helps manage complexity, especially across projects or teams. Yeah. It's another concept to learn, but powerful. Right. So who is this actually for then? And who should maybe steer clear? So what does this mean for you listening? Look, if reproducible setups are your priority, if you need reliable dev environments, if you love the idea of easy rollbacks, and critically, if you're willing to invest the time to learn this declarative approach, NixOS is frankly awesome. Especially for things like VMs or servers? Absolutely. Anywhere stability and predictability are king. But if you just want a simple desktop that works out of the box with minimal fuss, you know, browse the web, do some office tasks, Something like Fedora, maybe Ubuntu, might genuinely be a smoother, quicker experience to get started with. Okay, makes sense. So to sum it up, NixOS offers this incredibly potent, stable, reproducible platform. It's fantastic. But it demands a real shift in how you think about and manage your system. It rewards that effort, definitely, but you need to be ready for it. So the final thought for you to consider, what? how much upfront learning are you willing to trade for that kind of 
deep control, reproducibility, and uh, rock-solid reliability in the long run. Could this be the end of your works-on-my-machine problems?